He big. He's strong. He's a fucking simp. On today's episode of Corey in the House, we're going to be talking about why you should play Potemkin. Buckle the fuck up, it's time to bust. By signing your contract with the Dark Gods of Fighting Games to forego the allure of flashy combos and devoting your life to the Holy Order of Grab, you will be rewarded with a lifetime of strength. Join us, comrade. We are infinite. We are connected. The Grab is everywhere. I know what you're thinking, it sounds like a cult. It's actually not a cult, it's just a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. It's not a cult! Potemkin is a grappler, which means his game plan revolves around a command grab that does hella damage. How do grab? First, take your avatar. Make it wide. Oh yeah, now we're fucking talking. Once you're in a game, everyone is going to take one look at you and nope the fuck out to full screen or outside of your effective range. Come here, you fucking bitch! This is where the basics begins. Basic game plan. Use your rocket skates to schmoo on over to Mr. Dickinson here and give him a nice chiropractic adjustment. Potemkin has disgusting pressure up close and very scary mix-ups. It's strike throw. You can either command grab or command dab. You can do mix-ups like this fucking bullshit. To be honest, you got mixed. He needs it. He's low tier and struggles a lot in many different ways, and everyone else in the cast is just better and soul far slash. Why the fuck, Daisuke? Getting in close range can be a bit of a chore. Nobody wants to play patty cake with a 1500 pound human weapon. This is where his special moves come into play. Each is a tool that allows you to overcome opponents that want to keep their games hug free. I know, I know, the move on everyone's mind is the big PB, but before you can slap a pair of grapple bottom jeans onto your opponent, you have to get in close to do it. The rest of Potemkin's kit is there to help. Let's start with the ones that help you get in to run your game plan. Mega fist me, grab daddy. I'm just a simp at this point. I'm not even gonna hide it anymore. It's really hard to anti-air if you do it forward, but it's punishable on block. Backwards is a safe pressure ender, and it can be Kara canceled to be plus on block with mix-up potential afterwards. Slide head. Use this to knock people down and get all close and friendly-like. It's a really silly looking move with a lot of potential, and it's pretty important to running Potemkin's game plan. When two Potemkins confront each other, they will battle for dominance by slapping their heads on the ground. It is one of the silliest displays in nature. Rocket skates, baby! This is your main movement tool. It's got a hit of armor, so you can just go through shit. Why the fuck not? Just yeet, bro. But uh, for real, though, it's beaten by every 6 p.m. in the game, so use this sparingly. You can use this to cheat space in neutral, but be careful because Hammerfall Break is very punishable on whiff because of the long recovery. Look at the flick of that wrist. All of your projectiles are mine now. This lets you turn any projectile in the game into your projectile. In my opinion, this is what gives Potemkin a chance in hard matchups like Ramlafall and Axel because you can reflect their main projectiles. Because... Why not? He needs it. This is also a good frame trap to catch mashing, jumping, or backdashing. And it can be held to switch up the timing. Once you're in, here's what you'll be doing the most. Gun. It's plus as fuck! He needs it. It does a ton of chip, you can kill with it. This is your best mix-up tool. You can grab or use a button afterwards. This turns your already disgusting strike throw pressure into a life or death situation that's loopable if the opponent isn't responding correctly. Repeat after me. He needs it. Finally, the one you've all been waiting for. Convert your opponent into the holy society of grapitalism. This move will give you a feeling similar to actual drugs. It's the highest raw damage move in the game, and holy fuck, it, it, it's just the best. It's the thing that everybody you play is afraid is going to happen. This is your ideal punish tool, your ideal mix-up, the last thing you think about when you fall asleep, and the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning. Oh, someone's jumping your grabs? Let me introduce you to Heat Knuckle. Why do they call it Heat Knuckle when you pot in the cold knuckle, pot out hot heat the knuckle? I think I just had a stroke. It's an anti-air grab hit grab thing that can be blocked, but it's plus, so if it's a close enough range, you can command grab after the other grab. Grab rave. So that's his basic game plan. Let's cover his supers real quick. Heavenly Potemkin Buster. Fun side note, if your name is Kevin, you can yell Kevinly Potemkin Buster every time you land this, and wow, I, I can't believe I put that in the script. I have depression. It's the best super in the game. You can fucking fight me on that, and you'll be wrong. It's a little tricky to confirm into sometimes because angles, but usually you can just give them the old bop, 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 followed by the longest yeah boy ever, and it'll put your opponent in the literal hospital. Giganterkai is a, a big old fucking wall. 
It has similar utility to Heihyun's Super Ball in Excerpt. Yeah, I worked in Excerpt to the Strive character guy, baby! <laughs> You can't go through it, you can't go over it. Guess you just gotta sit there while Potemkin waddles towards you menacingly. Oh lord, he comes! It's also an invincible reversal. He needs it. This doesn't go away if Potemkin is hit, and will go roughly two-thirds of the stage. It also sets up my favorite combo in the game. Once you've got a knockdown or you're in range to pressure, you can begin to dismantle your opponent. First step, land close slash. From here, the world is your oyster. You can do any number of options. You can frame trap, or tick command grab, or delay a button to catch a jump out, or just literally, there's so much stuff you can do with this. Once you've landed this, get ready to pour your opponent a nice tall glass of grapple juice. Check out Frankentank's pressure guide if you want to know more. Once you couple his basic game plan with how meter allows you to play in this game, you can literally gamble shit so fucking hard. I love it. It's so enabling. You just check me into the fucking casino, baby. The way that directional RC works in Strive allows for movement and spacing control that most grapplers could only dream of. Being able to bypass some of the archetype's downsides to have very fast mix-ups, escape and punishment options, and ways to make things whiff that you otherwise wouldn't have any sort of access to is amazing. You can have a normal knockdown at near full screen and just rocket skate, eat the meter, oh my wamushin to bust that motherfucker before they even have the chance to think. You can also directional RC to catch a jump arc you wouldn't normally be able to contest. Meter and directional RC make this character so much deeper and robust. I'm barely starting to sink my teeth into it, but seeing the potential to play such a deep spacing game and create many different situations keeps me very invested in the character. It's not about how good I can be, it's about how creative I can be. It allows for a level of self-expression that seemed lacking on the surface. You should play this character. However, our lore is not flawless. There are some difficult things you're going to come across if you decide to join our ranks. Firstly, his matchup chart. He's big, he's thick. which means he struggles against characters that excel at longer ranges or are capable of controlling a lot of space. Axel, Nagoriyuki, Zato, Faust, Ramaphal. Potemkin suffers against these characters to differing degrees. The basics of getting in and running your game plan is still your win condition. With one command grab doing almost half their life bar, it's a very satisfying reward for dealing with a bad matchup. He's a semi-charge character. His one charge move is one of his most important tools, being Hammerfall. If you don't like charge characters, then this might be a deal breaker for you even though he's not as reliant on it as he was in previous versions. His command grab is the GG motion. <laughs> An ancient and difficult technique made of numerous difficult hand signs that takes years of study to master. Only the most devoted sages of grappling arts can- it, It's a half circle back then forward. It's not actually that hard. You can do it like this, or this, or this. It just takes a bit of practice to do consistently. Care canceling. I love that a simple character like Potemkin has this extra level of execution and nuance. You can cancel the startup of 6k by inputting any special move to give it either a longer range or make it more usable in combos. This requires precise timing, and it's necessary to unlock some of this character's more optimal combos and spacing game, but it is not required to play the character at all. Check out Snap Grapple Pop's Kara Canceling Guide for an in-depth look on the technique. So yeah, I hope you give him a shot. Become a part of the Grappler Hive Mind. It's like that shit in StarCraft where their ponytails connect them all to each other, and th so when one Potemkin busts, we all bust, and I... I could have worded that better. It's not a cult. It's not a cult! Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, as it gives me the satisfaction of a job well done, and it's my only source of serotonin. Play Guilty Gear, and be good to each other.